Okay. Okay. So now uh, coming to the solar cell application, I uh, you know a simple uh, uh, starting from a very simple solar cell to uh, a, a, you know organic uh, any kind of complicated uh, uh, solar cell we can design in 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 this particular tool. Uh, now I opened up a, a, a organic solar cell structure. Okay. Uh, so let's see, let me just first uh, let me showcase you a first simple a simple solar cell applications. Uh, just a moment. Mm. Uh, yeah okay uh yeah so as you can see that it's a basically a simple solar cell okay uh first of all uh this is this is called uh the numerical uh gy okay uh and here actually we design our uh, our our structure so here actually uh, at the top of the top of this particular tool you can see uh, there are various tabs okay uh, which is actually useful for uh, designing our 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 structure so first actually structure first tab if first if you look at the first button uh, that is called the materials okay uh, actually in if you click on the materials it consists of several materials uh, uh, inside the list correct and uh, this list actually uh, uh, is some 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 basic uh, library materials okay uh, has distinct uh, uh, property uh, in lubrical all the properties actually been treated as a as a as a in, in terms of uh, refractive index in form of refractive index actually uh, so so let's say for example if i click let's see if, if you find one certain material called a silicon uh, you see the simply uh, a silicon this particular material it actually uh, it consists of wavelength and the, ref the real part and the imaginary part okay uh, so that's how actually lumerical can understand uh, whenever you know designing any type of materials you need to you need to give the proper refractive index of this particular material okay uh, now as you can see that it's a basically the kind of a dispersive material which we can design uh, dispersive material as you know that uh, the refractive index varies with respect to frequency or wavelength uh, so it's a kind of it's a it's a, it's a, it's a type of a, a dispersive material we call it as a sample 3d type uh, 3d type material uh, in in terms of lumerical language uh, now let's say for example if you want to create uh, a material which has uh, which has a property uh, let's say for example a simple dielectric material okay so in that case we have an option uh, called a simple uh, dielectric materials okay uh, that you can simply create a dielectric material over there okay uh, or let's say for example a, a single a, let's say for example an nk material okay uh, it's not a dispersive at all uh, uh whose uh, you know we we assume that uh, this for this particular material the refractive index it remains constant throughout the wavelength okay so these sort of material also we can design uh, from here or let's say uh, we can design uh, nonlinear materials okay i was talking about the nonlinear materials uh, as you as you can see that all these things actually i have dis i have explained uh, in that slide in the previous slide the, at the beginning of the presentations uh, about the materials of the photonics okay uh, where actually I, I i talked about this you know that the nonlinear material the dielectric materials okay uh, even we can, we can generate the metal as well okay uh, uh, so for example for the metals we have uh, this called this type called a lorentz material lorentz type okay in the lorentz type actually we need to define the plasma frequency of a particular material uh, the dielectric permittivity okay all this all the sort of information need to be need to be provided to create a metal okay we can define the graphene okay all sort of things we can we can design okay so so basically uh, while doing the simulation so sample 3d data is very very popular it's most commonly used when we uh, uh, when we go for the simulation okay uh, and uh, this is a structure part where we actually you know uh, uh, take the structure uh, uh, of, uh, to consider uh, uh, for the simulation part okay uh, there are various type of things like for triangle uh, for uh, for example uh, uh, basic rectangular structure okay so here actually we have used a very basic rectangular structure uh, that is actually used for uh, uh, you know uh, for, for 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 the contact part for the base part uh, uh, we uh, we have used uh, this this particular rectangle okay then we have the silicon simple silicon layers and simple uh, air coating okay and and 
what is the purpose of, of of showing this just to just to you know just to give the overview how to uh, design the layers uh, okay uh, in 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 uh, in lumerical and after that once you complete the designing part okay then you need to apply the, the simulation boundary okay so this is the simulation as you can see this is my simulation boundary okay and uh, then after that once you once you design once you complete the simulation boundary then you have to define the monitor so as you can see this is this yellow this yellow line is our monitor okay so you can see it from from here very clearly this is your monitor this is your monitor this is your simulation region the orange part and this is this white aperture as you can see here this is my source okay uh, in lumerical actually uh, source distance doesn't matter here we actually uh, let's say for example if in practical cases let's say you have a collimated sources okay uh, let's say when you are designing a solar cell we we just think that a solar light a, a simple solar light okay we consider it as a plane because it's coming from from sun it's long distance long uh, long away from from our earth from our ground so basically we consider it as a as a as a, as a plane plane okay so so we have in in lumerical we have the provision you know to create uh, plane wave sources as per our requirement okay so we can we can design the plane wave sources we can we can uh, once you you know uh, click on the plane wave sources uh, we need to do we need to give the property of the plane wave sources just to you know simply uh, giving the directions the polarizations actually uh, where what we can do is the uh, you know we can simply uh, define the s polarized light or p polarized light okay or let's say if it is a kind of unpolarized light on the in that case what you can do is you can put a simple angle okay you don't need to define the polarization uh, initially okay but if you want to do that uh, if you want to simply uh, give the input uh, of of the polarization state uh, that option is also available okay uh, remember i am using this 2023 r2.0 version it's the latest version okay that's why i'm getting this options uh, the older version this was not available okay uh, whoever is using uh, older versions uh, will not you'll not get this this features okay you need to upgrade that uh okay so basically now you have to pro provide the injection axis uh, the direction of of the soul uh, of the lights okay uh now you have the options to select the the wave vectors basically uh so that that op that that provision is also given here so if you see uh that if you want to define the uh the k vectors uh that is also given okay so in the k vector actually you need to define the uh, because you know the k vector varies uh from 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 angle to angle okay uh for for different axis uh also the k vector varies uh, so these things actually need to define uh, to define uh, a plane wave sources. Okay, so plane wave can be defined in numerical by simply using angle, by simply using the S of P polarization, or simply by using the K vectors. Okay, so this is how we can define the the source property. Uh, the geometry part you actually need to define the the uh, the apertures the aperture size the aperture of the sources part, uh, and then uh, in the frequency domain we need to define the frequency uh, the spectrum part. Okay. Uh, so basically, since I'm 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 simulating uh, so uh, uh, you know solar cell, of course, I'm taking a very broad solar spectrum, uh, okay, to simulate this particular structure. Okay, so once you are designing with the solar cell, so, so you know uh, once you are ready with the so, uh, the source part, uh, then you need to go to the simulation part. Uh, in the simulation boundary, okay, uh, we have a different options. Uh, first of all, we need to define the simulation time, okay, for how long you need to simulate it. Uh, so please look at uh, that the simulation time is in terms of femtoseconds. Uh, just imagine that how small it is. Uh, basically, it actually uh, gives you the pulse length okay the pulse length in time domain uh, that's why it is is very very narrow or uh, femtoseconds uh, it can go up to nan nanosecond as well it, it basically depends on the on, on your structure okay uh, if you increase the uh, simulation time of course ultimately eventually uh, the simulation the overall simulation time will also increase uh, now in the mesh settings of course in the geometry tab uh, you need to define the, the geometry of this overall simulation uh, the region okay uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention that is uh, uh, the dimension of the simulation region has to be set in terms of 2d or uh, 3d okay uh, so as you can see that it is set as a 2d okay so you can see a simple plane okay uh, then uh, you, you can you can define the dimension as per as per your choice okay as per your design uh then in the mesh settings yes i was talking about the mesh mesh size uh so basically uh from here actually you can you can control the minimum uh mesh step settings okay uh basically or, or let's say in the layman term we can say that it's a uh, resolution is which is a general resolution set by that by the solver 
okay uh, that you can that you can change uh, by simply changing the minimum mesh strip size uh, you can simply change the mesh accuracy of course that as the name suggests if you increase the mesh accuracy of course uh, the more dense uh, the mesh will look like uh, and and it will give the more accurate results and but it will it comes uh, but it in in the cost of uh, memory time and uh, i mean memory uh, simulation memory and the simulation time uh then we need to define the boundary conditions uh the periodic boundary conditions uh, there are several boundary conditions we can use uh pml metal periodic boundary conditions symmetric asymmetric block and pmcs so these are type of uh, boundaries uh, each and every boundaries uh, have some distinct properties i'm not going into the detail part uh, uh just to just for you just for for the understanding uh this blue is basically a substrate and this red is basically a active layer which is made up of silicon uh now uh, i hope you understand about uh, this, this this the part i mean uh, how to design how to design how, what kind of uh, parameters you know need to set uh, for the simulations okay uh, it's not it's, it's not so easy uh, as it looks like of course because this is very simple simulations of course it de depends on the complexity of of your structure okay so just one uh, uh, structure i just need to uh, showcase you uh, that is uh, called uh, organic solar cell structure okay uh, uh, so here actually we uh, we can design uh, we we have designed actually a, a simple uh, organic material uh, uh, and then we design our own uh, uh, own solar cell over uh, own solar cell here okay now uh, i think you might find it a bit difficult to understand but i i'm i'm trying to uh, i'm trying to cover it as as simple as possible okay let's just me just highlight this thing uh, just delete all those things. Uh, just a moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is the this is the overall structure. Okay. Now I'll I'll, I'll do it step by step. Okay. So first I'll come with uh, aluminium layers. Okay. So this is this structure is your uh, is your simple aluminium. Okay. Because why we are using this aluminium? Because uh, we need to we need to uh, define the electrode okay so this is my this is my aluminium which is acting as an electrode uh then i will uh i'll, I'll create a, a base okay uh inorganic base okay uh so these particular uh, cases uh i have taken a zeno zinc oxide uh, uh zinc, zinc oxide as a base materials okay so this this uh violet color actually it's showing the the base okay the inorganic base okay uh and uh also uh you know uh uh is you can see there are some 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 periodic pattern on the top of the bases okay so what are the application of the of this pattern i'll come to that point okay what are the physics behind this okay and uh, just to give you the idea how to design uh, this particular structure then uh, we uh, have defined uh, uh, an organic layers okay uh, which is which is form uh, which is a basically i would say kind of uh, kind of a mixture of uh, of two materials one is ph3t and one is called pcbm uh, as i mean as you know i mean whoever working in the solar cell uh, you know that ph3t is actually acting as a donor at donor materials and pcbm is acting as an acceptor materials and uh, you know uh, these things are actually very very useful for uh, for designing uh, optical solar cells oscs uh, it has a lot of potentials because uh, we are trying to minimize uh, we are basically we are trying to ex uh, minimize the the recombination of uh, you know the of, of of electron and hole pair okay just quickly uh, give you the the basic uh, of of this particular thing uh, you know that uh, as you as, as you can see my screen uh, the paint i hope uh, so basically uh, this is let's say this is my p3ht uh, this is my material organic material p3ht uh, all these things are polymers and we have another uh, acceptor levels called a pcbm uh, this is my pcbm uh, materials okay so when this light comes okay it actually forms a uh, excitonic pairs you know that excitonic pairs it has some kind of electronic coulombic attractions but it's not a free charge at all okay uh, so what happens is uh, 
at the interface okay when this you know the pcbm at this p3 hd and pcbm interface so let's say for example this is my interface okay just assume that is in my interface uh what happens is this charge transfer happens okay from this from this uh, energy level to this pcbm okay so energy transfer due to the energy transfer okay uh the simply charge comes here okay and the whole st still it belongs uh sorry actually i mistakenly i put it uh, plus here it should be minus okay uh yeah it should be minus and this is my plus okay uh this is whole uh so now you can see that this is if the charge comes here okay still uh at this particular point also this charge transfer uh this charge transfer happens okay once this charge transfer completes okay uh what happens is okay uh simply the, the electron simply got shifted to this pcbm higher energy levels okay and uh the holes okay uh can we can you know, you know holes still stay here actually okay uh so basically this kind of you know physics happens in in this organic solar cells okay and you know that once the charge shifts from this particular energy level to this energy levels okay uh now this charge is completely free at this at this acceptor uh, acceptor materials okay so so basically uh, we actually reduces the recombinations for a, for for this particular uh, uh, for this particular materials okay because there is no charge there is no holes uh, together at the same place so that's that's why that's what the probability of recombination get reduced and that's what we do in uh, in organic solar cells okay that is the uh, that is the basic 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 physics behind uh, how this charge transfer happens in the in in the organic solar cells now coming back to the the simulation yes so basically this is a, a material which is a combination of this these two materials no not an acceptance and how we can design this materials we simply we uh, a simpler way to design this thing is to uh, define the elect the the property uh, the, the you know uh, the refractive index property of this particular materials okay so you can see that uh, this is the materials uh, p3 hd pcbm uh, material and as you can see that uh, uh, the wavelength wavelength property and the refractive index and the imaginary refractive index property i have uh, we have we have provided here okay that's 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 the all thing we need to do okay maybe maybe in experimental experimentally if you design this kind of solar cell this kind of materials you what you need to do is do is you need to uh, take the information take the refractive index informations out of this uh, material okay that's what you need to do and then you need to put it here uh, in the simulations uh that, that this is this is how we can we can design a, 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 a complex solar cell uh, complex materials uh then we have another simple material called a p, a p, a p dot pss so uh it's not an active layer it's a basically uh a, a, a transferred materials okay uh because you know that uh some of the you know some of the materials uh, uh some of the organic materials which actually uh, uh very very useful uh to uh, to generate a transparent materials and also it is very much flexible okay so it can be bent so so these kind of material is useful for uh, designing flexible screens uh, you know uh, organic 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 uh, uh, organic screens actually uh, uh, which can be useful for which can be used uh, in your phone displays okay uh, for example the solar cell displays okay so compared to this compared to the inorganic structure compared to itos and all it's kind of you know it has some kind of elastic pro property uh, but uh, which you know which uh, uh, pro probably it's a kind of a uh, it's it, it is breakable uh, but the thing is that this kind of organic material this it has some distinct uh, material property and it's unbreakable kind of thing okay uh, so that's why we use uh, this uh, p dot pss this materials okay even you can if you want to use uh, so i have actually have given a provision for ito i mean both are option are given uh, whatever you you like you can use uh, as a transparent materials okay so once you uh, define the structure okay now i one thing i i, I missed that is uh, the lattice that is the the periodic structure okay what uh, what this periodic structure is doing here so basically this periodic structure is useful to trap the light and that is useful for the optical trapping okay uh, as you know that you know this kind of this this photonic crystals actually uh, is a high contrast materials okay compared to this this uh, uh, compared to this uh, compared to this phc uh, compared to this particular materials okay it is made up of this zno uh, uh, compound okay as you can see that uh, uh, normally uh, if if i go down you see that this is my uh, uh this is my nczno or uh, this is simple dielectric materials which has a refractive index of 1.4 
okay uh, and because of this dialect because of this huge dialectic construct between these two materials uh, actually we 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 get uh, a trapping okay uh, at the at the interface of the junction okay at the interface of this uh, of the zno and uh, this P pcbm okay so in between this piece in between this zno and in between this uh, uh, this, po uh, this polymer materials active layer we have a strong confinement of light and which basically increase the absorption okay that that's the purpose of using the uh, of using this particular crystal and what after you know uh, once you are ready with the simulations once you design then we need to define the FTT simulations okay uh, this is how we define the uh, this is for example this is my unit cells okay uh, you know that uh, this structure could be very very big okay uh, there could be a lot of uh, a lot of lattice structures okay uh, here and there but uh, but if it is a periodic structure we'll simply consider a one unit cell uh, and that's 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 what actually gives the lot of power uh, uh, to reduce the simulation time uh, we don't need to simulate the overall structure so just only simple take the one unit single unit cells and uh, uh, then you can go for the simulations okay uh, that's why we, that and that is the reason we need to select the periodic boundary conditions okay uh, uh, there also uh, uh, apart from the periodic boundary condition also we have uh, another two uh, boundary conditions called called symmetric and antisymmetric boundary conditions that that also can be used for unit cell simulations and once you are ready with the simulation then you need to put the monitors okay so here is our agenda is to first of all find the amount of absorption uh, of light or photons okay inside this inside this layer okay inside the junction okay and how uh, and how much you know the light is getting absorbed that we need to understand first okay uh, because the, the the electrical simulation is a later the later part but first you need to complete the optical and uh, optical part and uh, you need to understand that uh, how much you know uh, absorption how much power is getting absorbed based on that your carrier will generate okay so that's that's why it is very 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 crucial and for that actually we need to put different monitors okay for different uh, at different junctions okay so you can see uh, these are the different monitors we we we, we can put here uh, one is at the junction uh, uh, of this of this uh, this adeno and the organic materials and one is at the at the at the uh, at, uh, at the p, p, p dot uh, material okay where actually we can also understand okay how much photon is being absorbed by the p dot materials okay that is also very much understood required uh, because uh, how much loss is uh, is coming because of that that also we need to figure it out okay so it will take some simulation time uh, that's why I, I already completed the simulations and uh, i keep it ready for you uh, yeah so once you uh, run the simulations okay uh, as you can see very clearly for from here uh, uh, this is my structure and now if i want to visualize the monitor uh, thing okay so there are two two type of monitors we use okay uh, let's list visualize this the, the electric field absorption as you can see that in my uh, in that in this result okay uh, this is the the electric field uh, uh, intensity electric field uh, electric field magnitude okay uh, which is being generated by this particular structure okay and as you can see and you'll see uh, uh, that if you if you change the absorptions if you change the the, the operating lambda operating frequency you see that how the absorption actually changes okay let me just change the color yeah uh, so this is uh, so from this figure actually you can understand so this is my zno uh, this is one uh, one un uh, one pillar of a zno and this is my the layers okay the active layers and you see that the junction how much you know the light is getting confined okay how much light is being absorbed here okay so see if i change if i shift this frequency right if i change the wavelength okay you'll you'll get some better understanding about the absorption right so this this thing we can observe we can observe by running running after the simulation okay so th this is uh, this is one understanding uh, about the about the absorption okay so there are another two monitors okay uh, uh, this is the overall uh, uh, absorption because anyway because we have this active material we have this uh, uh, p dot dot pss as well uh, but how to how to you know uh, just to uh, just to need to understand how much you know light is being absorbed by the active material we need to just simply subtract okay so we need to simply subtract the 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 monitor information at the bottom and the monitor information at the top 
so if you simply uh, just subtract it you'll, you'll simply understand okay how much you know material how much light is being absorbed by this uh, particular active layers okay you can do it by uh, uh, in your post processing okay by by writing some script okay uh, you can you can you can do that so lumerical actually it provides uh, it has it has their own built script capability okay uh, in that case also we uh, we do the post analysis okay uh, we can do the plotting and all we rest of the things we we do there okay so this is how we we can simulate a solar cell it's a, it's a one uh, it's one type of solar cell we can design okay 